G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I grow chilies all year round, even in winter. Let's get into it. I love eating chilies and I prefer them fresh, especially made into a simple condiment that I use to flavour meals all the time. But what happens when winter comes and the plants start to die? I could cut my losses and pull them out and start new chilli plants in spring, but that would leave me with no fresh chilies. So instead, I manage our plants throughout our subtropical winter, which can still get pretty cold. And that way we can have our fresh chilies at any time when most people are doing without or using their preserved stock. Now you might think, Mark, it's too easy for you. You live in a warm climate and that's true, but stick around if you live in a cold climate because I've got some tips for you also on growing chilies through the coldest part of the year. But we'll come back to this plant because I want to give you a demonstration on how I overwinter this thing. Right here is a chili bed with several varieties of chilies that I prepared earlier. This here is a ricotto chili. It's a yellow type. Just pick one off. They're quite hot, but they're very tasty. They look like a mini capsicum. And the reason why I chose this variety is because it actually grows very well through the winter time here. And it's known to be a variety that is more cold tolerant than most others. And my first point is, if you are wanting to grow chilies through the coldest time of the year, maybe select varieties that don't mind the cold as much. So in this bed here, we've got the ricotto. I'll just put this down for now, but I'm definitely gonna eat that a mini Thai. You can see it's looking quite scrawny. This one here is just a really tiny Thai bird's eye. This is a big red, but it's not very big at the moment because of winter, they don't grow as large. And then the rest in here are some cayennes, which are pretty much my lay down favorite chili because they're so easy to grow. And I've got an example of that, there's some seedlings coming up right here at the wrong time of year. And around the other side here, I've got a leftover eggplant. The first thing that I did when I'm refurbishing the bed for winter and when I'm refurbishing chilies is to give them a prune back. It does two things. It gets rid of the extra dead wood, some of the diseased leaves or branches, but it also starts to stimulate growth naturally, like most plants do when they've been cut back or pruned. And this stimulation can activate them even at the wrong time of year and get them starting to grow so that they're well prepared and in a good place when the weather starts to warm up in spring. Once I've got all the plants pruned, I then wanna assess the soil and make sure that it's good enough for those plants to continue to grow at the worst time of year and then also start to grow even more as spring comes. And this bed here, I assess the soil as actually being quite depleted and poor. It was very sandy, the organic matter had sort of dissipated and pretty much it was just the weeds that was in here enjoying the remaining nutrients. So I needed to do two things, up the nutrients and get some water holding capacity and organic matter and fill in there so that it wasn't as sandy, it had more nutrient and water holding capacity. And what I did to improve the soil here was get some of our cow manure first. I didn't dig it in because I don't wanna disturb the roots of these plants. That is a sure way to just tip them over the edge when they're stressed out already is by digging around the roots. So instead I just top dress with the cow manure, very well rotted cow manure I must say. It almost looks like black soil itself. It's that old and well rotted down, but still full of good nutrients. And I put a generous amount of that cow manure all around the bed and top that bed up. But the thing is, inspecting the leaves, and although they are stressed and 
chili plants will naturally get mottled leaves and look sickly, I still reckon they're lacking a little bit more nitrogen. So on top of the cow manure, I've got a pile of really old chicken manure just down there and I decided to sprinkle some of that around the plants as well. And I did this quite targeted. I don't want to overdo it because chicken manure is fairly strong, but this is really old stuff, but still it's strong nutrients wise. And I don't want to overdo the plants, but I do want to give them a good boost. Now people say, if you use too much nitrogen on fruiting plants like this, you can get a whole lot of leaves, but not a lot of fruit. I'd say at this time of year, you do want an extra foliage boost. Nitrogen rich fertilizer, such as chicken manure, is going to be perfect to give them a pep up in the next few weeks or so we'll just start seeing them look a lot better now if you don't have cow manure or chicken manure any type of fresh manure that's okay you can still do the same thing with bought compost even and commercial fertilizer get a good organic type of mix maybe a blood and bone and sprinkle that around the plants with a whole heap of good compost and it'll do the same thing. Final thing I did was top the bed with a deep mulch. Chilies aren't a winter plant, as we know. They like it hot. They're suffering. Their tootsies are getting very cold at the moment and we need to put a bit of a blanket over them so that it helps. And when the sun hits the bed, we want it to warm up and stay warm as long as possible under there. So a nice thick layer of mulch, it can be wood chip, it can be grass, old grass clippings, it can be loosen. Loosen adds extra nitrogen, of course, but I use sugarcane mulch. It's easy for us to get and it's seed free and it works a treat. But what if for some reason you can't keep them in the same bed? Well, here are, I don't know if I can even lift them up. I don't think I can. Two habaneros that I potted up from another garden bed. I needed to put them in pots because we were refurbishing the garden beds behind me. This habanero here is having babies. Well, I'll be, that's two lots of little chilies that are growing at the wrong time of year. This bed here is kaputz anyway. I've fought with it for so long. It's time to completely renovate it. So I need to get rid of the plants out of here, but there's a couple of really great reasons and examples I can show you. I want to keep this orange bird's eye because I just love it and I don't have any other plants like it at the moment. Yes, I could grow it from seed, but that plant's not done yet. So I'm going to repot that up and I'll show you how I do it and the process I go through. But before we do that, I want to show you something else. How long can we overwinter chilies and keep them? Well, it's usually around three years, and this is a great example. This one here, I think is over three years now. And although it's growing quite well, leaves are looking good. Yes, it's suffering a bit because it's winter, but it's a nice big chili tree. It's a cayenne. However, there's one thing missing, the fruit. Maybe one old red one on the end there, but for the most part, this whole big chili bush doesn't have much fruit left on it. And that's because it's pretty much had it. Three years is usually max. This time it's over. This fella has to come out and I'm not gonna bother trying to save him. You can tell how many times I've pruned it back. The motley, almost olive-like old stem on it. All oh, the trunk. Oh. Well, buddy, you've done me well for many years. I'll take that, give me it. And uh, I'm afraid it's compost for you. Okay, now I'm prepared. And that's important because you wanna limit the stress as much as possible when you're transplanting a chili plant like this. So I've got my pot ready, I've got a table, I've got some premium potting mix, not sponsored or anything. Hey, if you do wanna sponsor me, by all means, you know where I am. And I've got some also not sponsored. I could use a seaweed solution, which is just as good for transplant shock, but this is a liquid fish fertilizer. It's made by a guy down south here in Australia. Uh, he just sells it on Facebook. It's called Ocean to Earth, if you're interested in it. Nice guy, and I've been using this quite a bit. He sent it to me to trial, and 
it should limit some transplant shock. Do the same thing, it's not overly strong as the seaweed solution would. So that's what I've got to prepare myself. And now let's get into gingerly removing this plant as less stress as we can. You can see where the outline of the root ball is. And now I just want to dig beyond that. And then I'm gonna go in for one big foul swoop and try to grab as much as possible. But I nearly forgot, I should prepare this pot. So I'll fill it about half with good potting mix. Probably about six or so inches. This pot here isn't that big. It's appropriate for this size plant. It's around 26 centimeters across. Pat that down, give it a good squish down. And let's see if I can dig it straight down with a couple of hits or at least even one would be great. And we can take it out. Nice. I'm gonna keep hold of that there on the base. Nice and easy. Trying to keep as much of that root ball together as possible. Put him over the pot and in. Get rid of any weeds. There we go. Just give it a nice press down. Get the roots in there. Support the plant. If we need to, I will put a little stake in here. And now we backfill with the potting mix. Doesn't have to be exactly central. We'll prune this plant back once I've got this done. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't prune it back beforehand is so that I can just shape it to the pot and you can see it's slightly off center because that's where the root ball was. There's more roots at this side because it was backing up against the sunny side of this garden bed. So you had more roots there getting more warmth. Press it down so it stabilizes the plant and just leave a bit of a lip there so that when you water, the water doesn't tip over, tip over the edge. The water actually can allow to build up and then seep through. Okay, the next thing is to give it a water in straight away. Don't let it sit there for too long as I'm pruning and carrying on. I want to give this thing a really good water in so that it gets a drink and it settles the root ball. Dash of this stuff. Not overdoing it. All right, give that a good water. Be loving this drink. And now I'm going to remove the fruit, pick them off first, and then we can start looking at pruning it. And I've got a bunch of the dry ones as well because I can use these dried ones to pot up into spring. I've left a few green ones on there, that's not gonna hurt. And the next thing I do then is start pruning back old pieces of wood. Doesn't matter if you get a bit of greenery with it, old motley looking leaves and that type of thing, dead branches. Give it a good trim back, overhanging stuff, stuff that's coming down from the base of the plant that's not needed. It's a fair trim, but it's going to allow that plant to recover a lot more so that it's ready to go in spring. If you're worried about the plant toppling over, it's not as steady as it could be, well, you can just put in a bamboo stick right down to the bottom, nice and carefully. Don't pierce any major roots or anything. And then use that as support, tie it off to that. And there it is. Now this plant can stay in this pot forever and keep growing. You might want to pot it up if it gets really big, but this is a good enough size pot for it. And it'll give you plenty of chilies in the next season and probably even some now through winter. It'll start to rejuvenate and put on some flowers, feed the bees as well. But the other thing you can do is transplant this back into the garden bed 
once the weather warms up. And that's what you can do in cold climates. Having chilies in containers like this allows you to have them out when the weather's nice and sunny and hot, and then put them inside when it's not. And by inside, I mean in a sunny location, somewhere where it gets some warmth, a sunny windowsill, or of course a hot house or greenhouse where it's nice and warm, or at least brings the temperature down a bit. If you're living in a really cold climate, you could consider putting them on a heat mat. They're inexpensive, these plant heat mats. They don't cost a lot to run. They're easy to install and maintain. And you could sit them on that and get them through winter and maybe even produce for you if they're in the right spot and getting enough love. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a red hot thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already share the videos around because that helps my channel out just about more than anything else. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.